and welcome back to Cornerstone Youth Markham's YouTube channel. My name is Sarah and I'm so excited to continue along with our August series, Squad Up, where we're learning what it means to be a part of God's family. Do you like feuds? Okay, picture this like Squad Wars and pick your side, all right? So, pizza or burgers? This is a hard one. I love pizza, but I could eat a burger any day. So burgers wins. Okay. Dogs versus cats. I don't know about you, but I find cats pretty scary because I feel like they have a mind of their own. They can scratch you at any moment's notice. So I'm going to go with the dogs. All right. This one's harder. Okay. Disney versus Pixar. I just watched Wally, -E, so I love Pixar, but all the Disney princesses, I think they win, right? See the light as it shines on the sea, let it go, let it go, like, they win, hands down. Okay, and the last one. Instagram versus TikTok. Oh, I guess this isn't really a fair competition since you're going to be banned soon, so, oops. <laughs> so some feuds are fun. But other feuds, when they get involved with their personal relationships and kind of have tension and resentment, those are not so fun. Let's talk about that today. Story time! Welcome back, guys. I am back to this little living room location with the two friends and also a new friend here, my sister! Woo! Welcome her. We're going to talk to you guys about a time that we fought. So, let's get into this. We went to maybe two years ago? Two years 2018. ago. 2018. We were going on this 2018. cool like Asia trip where we hit up um, like different places in Korea and in Japan and Taiwan. But I think it started in Korea when things started to get a little tense. So on my side of the story, my sister kept talking to um, myself and also her friend in this sort of um, <laughs> tone that was very sharp very rude i would say it would be like can you move that over there thanks kind of that kind of tone but that's what it sounded like to us and so to her. she kept saying it like that so i got kind of fed up so then i responded with the same tone to her one day the exact same so like can you pass me that bag of chips okay take it so i did the same thing to her but then she got mad at me because she was like why are you giving me attitude and i was like you're talking in this tone. So that's how my side got started. So what's your take? So I actually don't remember what happened. Um, it happened in 2018, so it's been a while. Um, but I do know that we had a little bit of a tiff um, between both of, both of us, as sisters normally do, um, because we live with each other. Pretty much we've known each other for what? How old are you now? 20, 20, you were 20 years old, so I've known her since like for 20 years old. Pretty much just imagine living with someone for 20 years you don't have to give them the whole life story of our sister so when my sister was born <laughs> tone was always an issue for me because i think i just normally speak in a very monotoned um non-expressive way so when i request something it sounds like i'm demanding for something and i was really mad at her because i didn't understand like why she was mad at me like why are you mad at me i didn't say anything that was rude but then for her she took it as you're being really rude because i don't like the tone that you have and then she wouldn't change it. So it was just like, what do we do now? Anyways, and then you also got mad at us for planning or not planning. Oh yeah, so this happened in Tokyo. I think it was just the, the tail end of the trip. Like every single morning, I'm like, I'm always the one to like, look at the maps, look at the subway system. Let's look at all this stuff. So I'm checking, checking, checking my on my phone and I just didn't have a morning. I think I guess I just wanted a break in that morning for myself, just like get myself ready. Cause I see like my, sister and my other friend that was traveling with us you know they take their time they put their makeup on they just like go on their phone they talk to whoever they do but she was getting mad at us but then at the same time we were like oh she likes to plan so regardless we should, we should just let her plan it because that seems to be what she's happy doing so mm -hmm. we just chilled i think it was one of the mornings we we're getting ready to walk out and my sister said something and it just ticked me off and i just blew up at both of them <laughs> <laughs> i blew up for both of them we had a fight and we didn't talk for many days on the trip like we didn't talk nicely to each other it would be very like tense so imagine traveling in asia experiencing really cool stuff but like everything being tense looking back the fight 
quite wasn't about a huge problem, but back then it felt like there was this wall of division in between my sister and I, and neither of us wanted to climb over that wall or tear it down. So let's go into scripture to see what the Bible has to say about this. And we're going back to Ephesians where we left off reading last week. And you'll remember that this book was actually a letter written by Paul, who was one of the church's early leaders. And we remember that the church is not a building and it's not a Sunday service, but it's actually God's family, the community of Christ followers. And for some context, the early church was made up of two groups of people. One, the Jews, and the Jews were God's chosen people. In fact, Jesus was a Jew himself. And then we have the Gentiles. And Gentile literally means anyone who was not a Jew. So before the start of the early church, these two groups of people would not really be found hanging out. They had a history of issues and differences in opinions that formed this wall of separation in between them. But when Jesus came, he declared that both Jews and Gentiles belonged and were welcomed into God's family. So we're going to read Ephesians 2 verses 13 to 18. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace, and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. So Paul is talking about two major walls here. There is that one wall between the Jews and the Gentiles, and also the wall of sin that exists between God and all of us. But Paul says that both of these walls can be knocked down. So let's talk about the wall between us and God. We're going to read from Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 10. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this, not from yourselves, it is the gift of God not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So sin is what Jesus saves us from, and sin is anything we do that goes against God's purpose. But Jesus, only through his death and resurrection, saved us. He made a way for us. He destroyed the wall of sin that separated us from God because he cleansed us from our sins. So instead of a wall, Jesus created something new, reconciliation, which is a big word that means restoring friendly relations. Picture it this way. Instead of building a wall, Jesus built a table and invited us all to take a seat. Walls separate, but tables let us see eye to eye, have conversations, share meals, and invite others to come join us. Because of Jesus, we are reconciled with God. And because of Jesus, we can reconcile with each other. Through Jesus, we can do for others what God has done for us. That's the amazing ability that we have as God's family. So just like Jesus called to the Jews and the Gentiles, we as the church can make peace. We can tear down walls and rebuild broken relationships. All right, so back to the story in Asia. You have three of us, sometimes four of us, and us two, we're just not not in good spirits. But then I remember one time we were in Jeju, so this is an island in Korea, and I was I was still annoyed, and she went off on her own one morning. And what happened? Um, I remember just uh, 
sitting on a, on a rock. We were staying at a beachside area and right beside our Airbnb there was like a waterfront and you just sit by the rocks um, and I think I was just listening to, I think it was was it Reckless Love? I don't remember one of the songs actually. I was soaking in like, you know, worship music and then I was listening to like, you know, spending time with God. And I think spending that time with God really helped me kind of gather my own thoughts and how I feel. And also starting to like, you know, maybe empathize with this one over here. Um, so I think it, I needed that moment for myself um, just to be with God in that place of peace um, so that I can just kind of recharge myself. Um, and I think I came back, I don't know, I came back happier. She came back more mellow and like I could see she, before she was a bit like hard and like prickly, but I was also prickly. And then she came back and it was softer so we could actually talk. So we actually were able to talk after that. And then later on, like we had our friend kind of mediate between us. So she would listen to me and she would listen to my sister. And then we kind of all talked. <laughs> and so yeah, by the grace of God, we worked things out and here we are today. We're fine. We had a great trip. We've got great pictures. Um, and we've still fought, obviously, since then. It's been like two years. Of course we fight. Mm -hmm. But each time we, like, we humble ourselves and we ask each other for forgiveness and we say sorry um, because we're sisters and we love each other and you kind of mm -hmm. have to apologize and make up for the sake of the relationship mm -hmm. regardless of... Uh, I've heard this quote, like, you shouldn't care more about being right than you do about the relationship mm -hmm. so sometimes even e even if we're right in whatever we're arguing it's more important that we as sisters are strong together and mm -hmm. so that's why we apologize and make up and that's what jesus would want us to do so mm -hmm. it's hard but we do it so yay sisters this week i challenge you to start tearing down a wall and build a table no not literally Ugh. I mean, you can tear down the wall of sin between you and God. Remove all obstacles between you and Jesus. Or maybe you need to tear down the wall between you and another person. And I know it can be scary, but you can make the first move just like Jesus did for us on the cross. As God's family, we can do for others what God has done for us and bring reconciliation and peace to our relationships. So thank you, Jesus, for that gift. All right, guys, I hope you have an awesome week ahead of you. If you do something fun this week, comment it down below. I would love to know. Like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for more awesome content heading your way pretty soon. Okay, guys, be blessed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!